is Jenny C and welcome to my channel. Today you guys, I'm bringing you an interesting topic. We're gonna be talking all about orthorexia as you can tell by the title of this video. What it is, what are the signs, how do you get treatment for it, and also I'm gonna be throwing in a little bit of my own personal experience with orthorexia, so stay tuned for that as well. Before we get started, I just wanna say a quick trigger warning that we're gonna be talking about orthorexia, which, spoiler alert, is an eating disorder. If any of those things may possibly trigger you, please feel free to click on any of my other videos. I have so many other videos on topics that have nothing to do with that. Also, disclaimer that I am not yet a health professional, although I'm really close. <laughs> this video is not intended to diagnose or treat anybody for anything. This video is just for entertainment and educational purposes, so seek out a health professional for your own unique health needs. And finally, I am linking all of the resources that I'm using in today's video in the description below, along with a bunch of other resources on eating disorders and mental health things, so if you or someone you know may be struggling with an eating disorder or disordered eating or a mental illness or anything like that, please check out the resources down below. All right, so with all that said and done, let's get into today's video. All right, so first of all, what the heck even is orthorexia, right? It's not something you hear often, and in fact, I never even heard of it until I went through it myself. Orthorexia, or more medically professionally known as orthorexia nervosa, is one of the lesser known eating disorders. In the research article, Orthorexia Nervosa, an obsession with healthy eating by Dr. Scarf. He says, Orthorexia Nervosa is perhaps best summarized as an obsession with healthy eating with associated restrictive behaviors. What? All right, let's break it down because that's a lot of big words. Basically what he's saying is that orthorexia is an obsession with healthy eating. Why you may think is obsessing with healthy eating a bad thing. On its own, healthy eating is not necessarily a bad thing at all. It, most of the times it's a very good thing. However, it becomes a very, very detrimental, possibly detrimental thing for you if you are obsessed about healthy eating. So how do you tell the difference? Somebody who is uh, a healthy eater, let's say, somebody who makes healthful choices, somebody who uh, eats nutritious foods, they may go to a restaurant and think, hmm, I really want a burger. Let me get the burger. But you know what? Instead of maybe the fries, I will get a side salad just to like eat some nutritious greens because that's gonna be good for my health, right? So they make choices here and there, like they make sacrifices to eat something that's healthy for them because they know that's good for them and it's gonna do them well. On the flip side, you have the obsession with healthy eating. Now when you're obsessed with healthy eating, it can look different from person to person, but basically it's being very strict about only eating certain foods that you deem healthy, that you think are healthy, and the ones that you think are unhealthy or not good for you, you cut them out most of the times completely, if not almost all the time. Now you may think, all right, I mean, being obsessed with healthy eating, like what's the worst that can happen? You be super healthy? <laughs> Absolutely freaking literally not. <laughs> Let's talk about why it's not okay. I think Dr. Scarf describes it very well. He says, the attempt to attain optimum health through attention to diet may lead to malnourishment, loss of relationships, and poor quality of life. Again, that's a lot of big words. <laughs> so let's break it down one more time. Let's break it down. Basically what he's saying is that being really strict about the things that you eat can cause, number one, malnutrition because you limit the variety of foods you eat, meaning that you often limit the micronutrients like vitamins and minerals, and you may be limiting the variety of different macronutrients like carbs, fats, and protein, which are all very, very important for your overall well-being. Just for kicks and giggles. Let's say that somebody with orthorexia is being super obsessive about healthy eating, but in a way so that they're not necessarily putting themselves at risk for malnutrition. So, okay, that, that's not a problem, but hold on. Most often, if you're being very restrictive about the things you eat, you're most likely going to be putting yourself at risk for kind of breaking down mentally and socially. So let me explain. If you're obsessed about healthy eating, obsession kind of points to somebody who's 24 seven thinking about something. So mentally, imagine just thinking about food and healthy eating and just like being so obsessed about what I'm gonna eat, what I'm not gonna eat. Where can I get this? Let me check the ingredients, what's in that? 
whatever. Your mind 24 seven is going through that. You're leaving very little room to think about what actually make life worth living, right? Fun and adventure and friendships and relationships and love and, and life and laughter, you know? You're putting that on the back burner and you're giving most of your mental energy to food and healthy eating and that's all you think about and it rules your mind and in turn, it rules your life. So mentally, that's gonna be really exhausting for you. Also on that note, somebody who's very obsessed and restrictive about the way they eat will oftentimes avoid social interactions because of the lack of control they'll have over food. So for instance, let's say back in my day, as somebody who struggled with orthorexia, let's say somebody invited me to their birthday and I knew that at a birthday, all that's gonna be there is pizza and cake. And I was like, neither of those things I allow myself to eat. So you know what, maybe I just won't go. And so things like that may start happening where you start isolating yourself from social interactions because you're trying to avoid having to deal with food that you don't allow yourself to eat or like a situation where you know you're not gonna have that control over the food you want. That's gonna put a huge damper on your social life. You may start losing friendships and relationships and you may start being isolated and alone in all of that. And finally, this is all going to negatively impact your quality of life. So now I just wanna talk about the top five signs that may indicate like orthorexia may be going on. These signs uh, that I've put together are based off of the nine signs that the NIDA or the National Eating Disorder Association website gives as well as my personal experience with orthorexia number one is that obsession with healthy eating that we've been talking about number two is restrictive eating not only are you obsessed about healthy eating but somebody with orthorexia may be very strict about the things they eat they may eliminate food groups completely like I don't at all eat dairy I don't at all eat sugar or whatever it could be anything but if it's not for medical reasons because some people genuinely cannot eat certain foods because they have a medical reason. Number three would be that fear of food at social gatherings and things like that that we also talked about before. If social events give you a certain kind of fear because you're afraid of the foods that are gonna be there or you're afraid of the lack of control you're gonna have over the food, that may be a sign as well. Number four, constantly obsessively thinking about food 24 seven. What I'm gonna eat, what I'm not gonna eat, what I do allow myself to eat, what I don't allow myself to eat, what is healthy, what is not, let me look at the ingredients, what's in this, what's in that. And number five is getting super uncomfortable or anxious or scared or fearful when you're suddenly not able to have the foods that you think are safe or healthy for you. If you or someone you know has experienced this freak out sensation when there isn't a food that feels safe or healthy to you, it could also be a sign that something's up. But again, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video. It's just for entertainment and educational purposes. So please seek out a professional. What the heck did I just do? I don't even know. All right. <laughs> As I mentioned in this video, and I've mentioned in several of my videos on eating disorders before, check out my eating disorder playlist if you'd like to see that. I have had orthorexia before. If you guys would like to see a more detailed explanation about my own personal experience, then please comment down below that you wanna see that because I would love to make that video for you guys. My personal experience, again, may look totally different than somebody else's, but I hope that sharing my experiences and educating people on eating disorders and topics like this help people struggling with it, help people to not struggle with it, it and to help people around people who are struggling with it to know what to do to help the people who are struggling with it. I hope you understood what I just said because I barely did. So <laughs> now that we've talked about the signs, quickly I just want to go over treatment for orthorexia because the if we know what's what it is, that's fine. But if we don't know what to do about it, what the heck, right? We can't go anywhere. Treatment is very important if you or someone you know is diagnosed with orthorexia or if you think you have orthorexia. It is of most importance for you to seek out a treatment team. Health professionals recommend having a treatment team that consists of a doctor, a therapist or a psychologist, and a dietitian who specialize in eating disorders and treatment of eating disorders. And there are plenty of free online resources that can help you as well. Recovery is hard, but it is so worth it, you guys. If you or someone you know is struggling with this, check out some of the resources that I've linked down below, share this video, anything like that that's going to help. I'll definitely dive way more into this topic later on in other videos. But in the meantime, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also hit subscribe down below if you haven't already. I put out a new video every week on Wednesday, so I'll see you guys again next Wednesday. Bye! Talking mainly about...
in and of itself. In and of itself? In and of? In and of itself. <laughs> in it on its own. <laughs> Line of ortho. <laughs> a shirt just fell down from my closet and I swear I thought it was a bat or something. <sighs> How am I gonna recover from that? <laughs>